Okay, so whenever I was a junior at uh, A&M Commerce, I was a RA, a resident assistant, in one of the residence halls there. Uh, it was on the very top floor of a 12-story building there, Whitley Hall. And uh, one of the benefits of, uh, of being an RA in Whitley is you get a, a double room. So you have one whole room to yourself, and it's connected to another whole room which you have to yourself. It's just a ton of space. And obviously, you know, I'm going to take advantage of that, right? And so, so during the year, uh, I was a RA, I was a student athlete, I ran cross country and track, and then I also was a business math tutor, and then I, I was a full-time student. And so my, you know, I had a full schedule. I was, I was busy just about all the time. My, my free time was sparse. You know, I, I didn't really get much free time to do whatever I want, but, uh, but, uh, you know, I did get a couple of days here and there where I had some free time. And uh, I forgot what part of the year this was. Uh, it must have been towards the end of the school year. Or not school year, but semester. It, not the school year. It couldn't have been the school year. So maybe the semester or something. And, uh, and I had a couple of days of free time coming up. And uh, I, had, I had two of my suppliers of golf balls. They had golf balls ready for me to uh, to come and pick up, and so I tried to schedule out a trip. And I normally don't try to go by myself. I try to have someone go with me. And so I uh, I contacted, well I I talked to my friend. I have a friend who goes to UTD, University of Texas at uh, at Dallas, and he's the guy who does golf balls with me. Or he, he yeah, we do golf balls together. And so I, uh, I asked him if he wanted to go with me, if he had a couple of days free time and wanted to, to, wanted to go. And he said, sure. And so I think it was over the weekend or something like that. And so he's, I, I told him the days that, uh, that I was thinking of going. And then I had, you know, I was free those couple of days. I think the only scheduling conflict I had was we have, you know, we have cross country or track practice just about every day. And if you don't have official practice, you're still supposed to like meet up on your own and still run with the team or whatnot. But uh, no, we still had practice, and so I talked to my coach, Coach Krolik at the time. Shout out to you, Coach. And uh, and so I told him that I may, you know, miss a practice or two. And I told him it, it was because that I was going to go up to. Uh, <laughs> I was going to go up to Michigan and Chicago and buy golf balls and come back. And his response was something like, oh, okay, Turner, yeah, yeah, whatever you say, you know, something like that. You know, we had a kind of a chill relationship. You know, I was one of those people who always, you know, did what he needed to do and, uh, you know, that took the initiative. And uh, so we had a, you know, a good relationship. And he was like, oh, yeah, Turner, whatever you say, you know, I don't think he believed me. But I was serious. And so, so I think it was either a Friday or a Saturday. Uh, I met up with my friend. I think we met in uh, Plano, Texas. I think it's where he was living at the time. Uh, or he might have come to Commerce. And then we just left from there. We took his vehicle, which was like a Ford Explorer or something. Some dad, dad mobile. I don't know. Family mobile. And uh, we got his uh, vehicle and uh, a U-Haul trailer, and then we went up on our way. And I didn't show up to cross-country practice. And so uh, then I guess he knew I was serious. But uh, so we were going, and our first we were going to go to Michigan and then Chicago, right? We the guy in Michigan is, is one of my main suppliers. He always gives me really nice and good golf balls, or a lot of them. And then the guy in Chicago was a first-time buyer, and uh, and we were we were going to get at least forty thousand. You know, it was going to be a trip, and just to make it worth it. And so we're going, going, going. And he he's on his phone and checking like Craigslist ads to see if there's any like random sellers of golf balls online. And there's this guy in Indianapolis who was selling golf balls. And so we're going through Indianapolis. And so we give him a call. And, uh, and sure enough, we go by there, we look at what he has and we buy them. And which is kind of, which is kind of strange because it usually takes five to 10 phone calls for one Craigslist person to, 
to find a normal guy selling golf balls. But uh, so we get, I don't know, maybe 10,000 from this guy in Indianapolis. And then we go up to uh, Michigan. And uh, this is where my main supplier is. Uh, good old guy. And uh, he has probably about 28,000 golf balls for us. But they are all packaged in like these vodka boxes. I don't know where he got all these boxes, but uh, we had like hundreds of these boxes that we just filled the U-Haul trailer. And they were all alcohol vodka boxes filled with golf balls, right? Which is fine. I don't care what they look like. But it's going to make sense for when I get further into the story. And so we, so the majority of our golf balls are coming from these vodka boxes. It's like 28,000, which is the vast majority of what we buy. And so we load up the trailer with those, and then we go down to Chicago, and then we buy like an additional 6,000 golf balls there. And they came in like coolers or something weird like that, I don't know. And then uh, after Chicago, then we came back down to Commerce, right? And, uh, th oh, this was a Sunday. Yeah, okay, so we must have left on a Friday or a Saturday, and we were getting back on a Sunday. Because I remember that we were kind of in a rush, because I had an online test I had to do for, like, finance or something. And it had to be submitted by uh, midnight. And so, I guess it was late at night, so we were kind of rushing back so that I could do it. And I remember, I remember we were, like, stuck in traffic. There was a wreck. And we had, we were in the Ford Explorer, I think, or something like that. And then we had the trailer, and there was like, the road was like blocked off because there was a wreck, and we were at standstill traffic. And all these people were going through the median, and we didn't know if we could cut through the median with the trailer. And so he was driving, and we switched drivers, so I was driving, and I just kind of, I just went for it, and I made it. Thank, thank the Lord. That would have been tough. But, uh. So we got back to the school about, it must have been late, maybe 10.30 or 11, because I was rushing to take this test. Once we got back, I I pretty much just left Austin to unload these golf balls while I went and got my computer, got a calculator, and I think I took a finance class, right? And I was up in my room on the 12th floor, and uh, in Austin, and one of my other friends they were helping us unload these golf balls and take them on up to my room, right? And, uh, you know, there are all these vodka boxes and stuff. And I, if I have any pictures of this, I'll, uh, I'll upload them so y'all can see. But uh, we park in the Whitley, in the back parking lot, you know, the main parking lot. And there's a U-Haul trailer. And, we're, and he is unloading all these vodka boxes, right? <laughs> onto the floor and then onto, like, these, like, carts and buggies, right? And I'm up on the 12th floor in my room taking a test. And I, and I can't leave. I'm like stressing about this test because I was, I was low on time. I knew the material. I, just, I was just low on time. And so, <laughs> and so he's unloading. He doesn't go to the school. You know, he's a, he's a, he's a guest, right? With, and, uh, and all of a sudden, a police car shows up and stops next to the U-Haul trailer. And this is like, it's like pitch black outside. You know, not much activity. And, these, and he is unloading all these vodka boxes. And Austin's like in my room, you know, unloading boxes. And then a police car shows up at the U-Haul trailer. And he gets out and starts, you know, he has a flashlight and stuff. And he's like radioing in and like looking around the place at all the boxes and in the, in the trailer and stuff. And so I tell, I tell Austin, I'm like, look, bro, I can't go out there. I mean, I'm taking this test. You're going to have to go and explain what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> and so and so he rushes down there and he goes and he talks to this police officer and I don't know well, I wasn't there so I don't know exactly what he told this police officer but uh, I guess he explained what we were doing and why we had all these alcohol boxes and stuff and they were filled with golf balls which is probably more suspicious to be honest but uh, I don't know. So after a couple minutes of him talking to the officer, he eventually left, and then Austin continued unloading all these, uh, <laughs> all these golf balls. Um, and so I got done with the test, and then uh, you know I started helping him unload all these boxes too. And so we eventually unload, and uh, and we get everything done. I had two friends helping me. It was a boy and a girl, and they were helping me unload all these all these golf balls in the middle of the night. It was just just imagine what it was like 
And so, so we got done with that. And so Austin went back home and then I was left to go through all these golf balls. And, uh, and for those of y'all who are watching my video of me going through all my golf balls, I did the exact same process. So I cleaned them, soaked them, cleaned them, and then I graded them, and then I separated them all by brand and model, and then I packaged them up to go to, uh, to be sold on eBay. And then the AAA and below ones, I which are most of my golf balls, I wholesale to my guy in Dallas. Okay. So we had about 40, 48,000, whatever it was, golf balls in my room, <laughs> you know, on the 12th floor of Whitley Hall, which is about, which is about 5,000 pounds or so, about two and a half tons, just in my room, just in golf balls, you know, just kind of crazy stuff. And so I had 20 something thousand that were triple and below that I had to wholesale to my guy in Dallas. And so this is where he comes into play. So he, so whenever I get all my golf balls ready, I give him a call and I tell him how many I have. I tell him where I'm at and, uh, and we plan to, you know, we plan to have the deal. And so we plan for a day and he comes down there and uh, he gets there. I take him up to my room, <laughs> dorm room, right? And I show him what I have and uh, he says that he'll take them. And so this is what we do. They're like, in, they're still... They are all in these barrels. I had barrels and everything in my room. And the golf ball washer I had at a friend's house who had a house or an apartment with a backyard inside Commerce. And so that's how I cleaned them. I tried to take the washer inside my uh, inside the Whitley Hall, but it wouldn't fit through the door. <laughs> so there was that. And then imagine taking these barrels, these 55 gallon barrels up into your dorm room. Yeah, we did that at night too. No one really saw us, but anyways, Shout out to the person who helped me do that. You know who you are. And, uh, gosh. All right, so my guy came to Commerce. I took him up to the 12th floor, and I show him what I have. All the AAA and below golf balls. And he says that he will take them. And so they are all in these barrels, just loose golf balls. And he brought a, I'm sure it was like an F-150 Ford pickup truck or some sort of pickup truck. And what we do is we literally... We, in my room, we put these golf balls into boxes and we put them inside of a cart and then we, and then we haul the cart to the elevator, go down the elevator and we go out to his truck and then we literally scoop the golf balls out of the cart and then we dump them loose into the back of his truck. And, uh, and that's literally what we did for... It was probably close to 30,000 golf balls coming out of my room into his pickup truck bed. And it took us probably an hour or two and going back and forth, back and forth, scooping balls out of a cart and, and dumping them into his truck. And it was loud. You know, it's not like a silent thing. You know, people wondering what the heck we were doing. You know, it was kind of a big spectacle. Uh, I think one of the first loads that we did, he, he went to like unload some balls into the, his bed of the truck and he like missed. And like balls, like scat, like fifty balls scattered across the parking lot, and so that was kind of embarrassing. But um, but there was, I mean, there was tons of people who kept asking what we were doing and watching us all weird and funny and stuff, and uh, <laughs> it was quite the spe spectacle. So so that's uh, so that's one of my golf ball memories from Commerce. I have I have several, but that's that's one of the main ones that uh, involved my wholesale guy, and so that's how he comes into play.